They pursued policies and actions that destroyed the nation, that were devastating to the country, that brought ruin to a once great nation. Now, we, we see that in our own country. Our nation has pursued things and adopted laws and policies that actually bring harm to our country. That are destructive to the nation. We're pursuing the east wind. I wish the east wind would come and ruin everything. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Now, what's true for a nation can be true for an individual also. An individual can pursue sin and pursue behavior that is self destructive. It's just, it's just devastating. It's like, it's like a, a self-inflicted wound. Self-inflicted ruin. Hosea goes on in verse 1 to say, just describing what was going on in the nation, he daily increases lies and desolation or ruin. Also, they make a covenant with the Assyrians and oil is carried to Egypt. You know, lies increase, deception. This was just, you know, normal. In the nation. Desolation, ruin increased. Things just got worse and worse in the nation. The closer they came to their destruction. Again, it says they, they make a covenant with the Assyrians and oil is carried to the Egyptians. I've got another image for you, a map tonight. So you see Assyria to the northeast. You have Israel in the middle and you've got Egypt down to the southwest. And Assyria and Egypt were like the two world superpowers at that time. And as you can see, the land of Israel was positioned between the empires of Egypt and Assyria. That's why Israel is often referred to as the land between. The land between. Because it was the land between the world superpowers of the ancient world. It was also the land bridge between Asia, Africa, and Europe. And I want you to note here that God placed his people at the most important intersection in the ancient Near East, right in the middle of everything. He didn't put them off in some isolated country off by itself where they wouldn't have to interact with other nations. As sometimes we think about Israel, like, oh, it's in the middle of nowhere. No. No, God actually put them uh, in the most strategic place on the map, right in the middle of all of the world's superpowers. Why did he do that? So that they could be a witness for the true and living God to all the nations of the world. And I want you to think about where's God strategically placed you so that you can be a witness for him. I suspect he did not put you off in some isolated place by yourself. You wouldn't be here. But he has strategically placed you so that you can be a witness for Jesus Christ to the world. And, and Israel was placed strategically in the middle of everything. And so they've got Assyria to their north. They've got Egypt to their south. And we see here that what they did is they, they played one empire against the other. They entered into agreements with Assyria for protection against Egypt, and they entered into agreements with Egypt for protection against Assyria. They trusted in their political diplomacy and their treaties instead of trusting in the Lord. These are the people of God. They're to be the witness to the world. But they're acting just like the world. And they're seeking their security in diplomacy and in treaties instead of trusting in the Lord and putting their hope in God. You know, Psalm 118 verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord to put your confidence in princes or rulers. Notice also at the end of verse 1, they paid Egypt with oil. That's olive oil. Not petroleum oil. We just talked about this on Sunday, remember? With Asher. 
And they would use olive oil for, for payment to other nations to buy protection from other nations. In this case, uh, Egypt. And we just talked about that with Asher. Uh, remember, Asher had so much olive oil that they could bathe their feet in olive oil. Anybody, anybody bathe their feet this week in olive oil to see what it was like? I mean, it's in the Bible. Let's try it, right? Don't slip on the floor. But it's, I think it's neat. We, we've seen this so many times in our studies together. It's just neat how uh, God will tie together both our Sunday morning Bible study and our Thursday night Bible study. To see superintending it, right? So verse 2, the Lord also brings a charge against Judah. Now Judah's the southern kingdom. And the, the southern kingdom of, of Judah is only about 135 years behind the northern kingdom uh, when it comes to their destruction. So they're on the same road as the northern kingdom. You know, the northern kingdom's just 135 miles ahead of them. 135 years, I'm sorry, ahead of them. Uh, but they're on the same road. And so God brings a charge against Judah also. So, so what God says here is, a, is addressed to all the tribes of Israel. You've got the ten northern tribes, the two southern tribes. He's addressing all of the tribes of Israel. And he says, uh, I will punish Jacob. That's a name for all of Israel. According to his ways, according to his deeds, he will recompense him. 